Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And first of all, little Winston wants to say hello. He's um, rearranging things on my desk and wants to get right back to it. But I thought I'd let him say hello to you before we get him back to his uh, rearranging tasks. <laughs> so anyway, um, I know a lot of you ask about Winston. He's doing really well. He's getting bigger and he's gained weight and he seems to be recovering from all of his health conditions. So cautiously optimistic, fingers crossed. Um, I have some great announcements and then I wanna get into a really fascinating topic. Um, I think all my topics are fascinating, but this one I think you're gonna enjoy learning about. First of all, we have a conference every fall. This will be our 27th one. And we have secured Vinny Prasad, uh, who is a remarkable researcher who has published 450 articles in medical journals. He's written a couple of books. Um, he is one of the few researchers out there that applies the same standards to research that I do. He has a whole lot more clout than I have and a bigger reach, and he's got an important position at a university. His videos are amazing. Go to his uh, YouTube channel, just watch a couple, you'll see what I'm talking about. So those of you who join us will get to be in the same room and have dinner with Vinny Prasad on, on Friday night of our conference, November 3rd through 5th. I'll post an updated flyer and registration form on our website within the next um, uh, day or so. Uh, second thing, careers. Um, I have a healthcare newsletter now on Substack. You're welcome to subscribe. Send me an email if you'd like to. I'll send you the previous issues. Um, and um, I also leave time every week to uh, help people who are trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. You want to leave institutional healthcare or you want to be in the healthcare business. We have some great training programs. Even if you don't sign up for our training programs, I've been at this for a long time. I can give you some perspective that I think will help you. And uh, then um, what else do I have on here? The clinical skills mini course um, got moved to March 23rd. Tomorrow, I'm going to be able to tell you why. We had an opportunity to do something really extraordinary. So if you watch all my videos all week long, tune in tomorrow. You'll know why we postponed it. And I think you'll scream and holler and jump up and down and say, yeah, glad you did. So with that, let's go on ahead and get into today's topic. All right. So we've been educating our clients and members about the importance of the gut microbiome for decades. The gut microbiome is involved in almost all human functions, and it even can influence your psychological state. The microbiome plays a very important role in immune function, which makes it almost impossible to achieve optimal health without paying attention to it. Unfortunately, due to the overuse of antibiotics and other prescription drugs, poor diet, stress, other factors, most microbiomes are in a very poor state. This results in an increased risk of almost every disease, and it can also stand in the way of recovery from illness. A new study shows that the microbiomes of multiple sclerosis patients are different from healthy controls. To investigate the issue, researchers conducted a case-controlled study with 148 MS patients and 148 matched healthy controls. They discovered that there were differences in 61 bacterial species, and of those, 31 species were increased in the multiple sclerosis patients. A positive association was found between inflammatory markers related to autoimmune diseases, such as C-reactive protein and those 31 species. There was an inverse relationship in the healthy controls. A positive association was shown between the condition of the MS microbiome and the risk of relapse for patients who were initially stable during two years of follow-up. So I'll talk a little bit about autoimmune diseases in general in the microbiome and risk factors, and then we'll circle back around to MS. Autoimmune diseases are common conditions, unfortunately now, characterized by immune system dysfunction, which is a byproduct of a compromised microbiome, as is leaky gut. Leaky gut's a risk factor for autoimmune due to something called molecular mimicry. Partially digested food proteins get into the bloodstream due to a compromised barrier, the amino acids that make up these proteins are identified as threats and antibodies are created. These antibodies can then target amino acid chains that comprise tissues and organs in the body that resemble those that make up the partially digested food proteins that leaked into the bloodstream. Females are at higher risk of autoimmune due to the influence of female hormone dysregulation. The onset, severity, and risk of disease onset and relapse are both associated with menstrual cycles, pregnancy, menopause, and having higher estrogen levels. 
Vaccination status is a factor as our weight, body composition, diet, and habits like smoking and alcohol. Genetics are a factor, but you'd be surprised at how small it really is. The strongest concordance in siblings is 17% for psoriasis. This means that the environmental factors that are under people's control, like the ones that I've just described, are much more significant contributors to autoimmune disease than genetics. That's a good thing because you can't do much about your genetics, but all the rest of the stuff I've been talking about, you can fix. The drugs commonly used to treat autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis are generally useless and can even make patients worse over time. Cognitive therapy is sometimes needed since depression is very common in long-term patients and it's really difficult to get better regardless of what's wrong with you if you don't think that you can. So the goal for autoimmune patients when we start working with them is first of all, stop the progression of the autoimmune disease that you have. That's the first and foremost thing. Um, if you can reverse it, sometimes you can make it go away. Not always, but sometimes. Just as important, prevent the onset of other autoimmune diseases. Most people who have one of them will develop more of them over time if they don't address the factors that lead to autoimmune. Neither of these can take place unless all of the factors that I've discussed are addressed. And I've always talked to people about their health using, I use analogies anyway, some of you who listen to me often know that, but I use this combination lock analysis or analogy. And here's what I mean. Let's just suppose for a minute that there's a safe on the wall behind me. And inside the safe is $10,000. And a combination lock is on the front. And if I dial the numbers right, let's say there are four numbers, I open up the safe and I can get the $10,000 out. Let's say I only have three of the numbers and I dial those up. Well, I don't get the safe open and I don't get $7,500. I don't get three quarters of the money because I have three quarters of the number numbers. I've got to get that fourth number right in order to open the door and get the money. So um, consequently, one of the things that plagues people who are trying to get well is reductionism, paying attention to one or two things and not paying attention to the totality of the things that are wrong with them. So by way of example, Several years ago, a well-intentioned doctor raised about a million dollars to conduct a trial that looked at the effect of dietary intervention on multiple sclerosis. Patients were randomized to usual care, which means taking drugs, or usual care plus a vegan diet. Compliance was high on the vegan diet. The patients seemed to be motivated, and they did get better. They lost weight, and their plasma cholesterol levels went down, by way of example. But their multiple sclerosis did not get better. In my opinion about why? because diet alone doesn't stop or reverse autoimmune and most other diseases. You can't just focus on one aspect of your health. Now, to be clear, diet is important. The average adult consumes a ton, one ton of food every year. So it'd be really difficult to make the case that that doesn't matter, right? But failure to address factors other than diet, like your weight and your have, you know, your weight status, your exercise, hydration, um, hormone regulation, and yes, the microbiome, which we started this conversation with, those things can, you know, you, you're not going to get better if you don't address those things as well. It's a form of reductionism when you focus on just one aspect of the factors that contribute to disease. It's just as harmful to health as other forms of reductionism, like let's just treat a symptom with a drug. So I pride myself and our company on having always offered whole person health and informed medical decision-making. The clients with autoimmune diseases who have sought our help could have scripted this message and made this video. Clients with other conditions when they arrive uh, who we've helped can do the same about their conditions. They often know more about the causes of their diseases and what to do about them than their doctors. And by the way, it's not always the doctor's fault. Doctors don't learn most of this stuff in medical school. So this might be a good time to consider if you haven't already done it, joining Wellness Forum. We have inexpensive memberships that allow you to access our libraries. And we also have memberships that allow you to consult with our health professionals, me or somebody else. And so um, if you feel like you're maybe victimized a little bit by a reductionist approach to your health and it's time to go beyond and look further, you might consider joining Wellness Forum. So anyway, take home points. Diseases are complex and usually the causes are more than one. 
in the case of um, all diseases, the microbiome plays a role. There are probably very few people out there who don't need probiotics or some help to restore their gut based on the factors that I mentioned. And um, paying attention to the totality of how you live your life and all of your habits is what's important to achieve and maintain health. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.